Hello, my name's Karina Thompson and welcome to another episode in the series Getting Started with Digitising Using My Sonet Embroidery Software. In this video, I'm going to be introducing you to the features of the Edit tab within the Digitising module. If you're a subscriber or own a copy of My Sonet, why not subscribe to our YouTube channel and that way you won't miss out on any of our future videos. In this episode, I'm on a PC with the Platinum level of software installed, but everything I show you today, you'll be able to do on a Mac. The principles are exactly the same. And straight away, you'll see that I've loaded an embroidery design into my hoop. It's one of the free downloadable samples that you can get from the download page of mysonet.com. And what we're going to be doing is we are going to use some of the features on the Edit tab to show how you can edit and adapt an existing embroidery design. Now, I know that some people kind of think of the Edit tab as a bit like Stitch Editor Lite. If you've never heard of Stitch Editor, don't worry, it's another module within the MySonet software and there's a series about the many features that you can uh, use to improve your existing embroideries. I want to start off by talking about the display range sliders. Now how this works is you can decide how much of your embroidery you want to display by sliding the sliders. So for instance the top one, if I move this across it will not display stitches from the start of the embroidery. The stitches are still there, they're just not on display. And similarly, if I move the slider from the end, it won't display the stitches that are at the end of the design. And so, for instance, you can play around with the imagery, uh, deciding which bits of the design you want to have in, which bits maybe that you don't want to display, in actual fact, what I am going to do is I'm just going to lose that um, uh, fill area like that. And so, for instance, you can see, so what I'm actually doing is at the moment, what's in my hoop at the moment, I haven't deleted any stitches, I haven't removed anything, but what is on display in the hoop is just a selection of essentially the middle of the embroidery and what I can then do is I can go to the home tab I could do select all visible and then I can do copy and if you look down here on my clipboard I've just got the stitches that are on display that if I wanted to I could open up a new window go to file a new window and paste that in I haven't deleted anything I haven't um, uh, uh, added anything. So again, let me go back to the edit tab. Now over here, we've got a button here that says display all objects. An object is essentially one of the lines in uh, the film strip. So if I click on that, that's going to bring everything back. I'm just going to click off the uh, selected area. So that's unselected that design. So let me show you a couple of other ways that you can use some of the features. If you didn't want to use the slider, but you knew of a certain point in your design that you wanted to work from. So again, on the film strip, it might be you say, well, actually, I'm going to go from here. And it could be that you say, well, actually, I only want to see from this point from the start. So that's just the very beginning, or it might be only to the end. Or it might be you only want to show that bit selected. So that's quite a, a, a nice feature if you have very um, specific things that you know that you want to uh, select or not. Sometimes uh, working with the slider, it's not a terribly accurate way, but it's a very quick way to see um, uh, your design. In many ways, the slider is a bit like the design player feature. But let's say, and again, let me do display all objects so that I know that it's all there. But it might be that I know, for instance, let's say I want to only specifically work with the fills 
in this embroidery. What I can do is I can ask the software to hide um, aspects of the embroidery. So for instance, if I click on columns, that's taken away all the satin columns. In actual fact, I know that there aren't any satin areas. I don't think there are many single stitches. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to take out the lines. And that's just leaving me with the fill patterns. And it might be you say, well, Karina, I, 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 if, if you wanted to change the fill patterns, I could have just found one area here on my film strip um, when it was displaying all the objects and I could have gone global properties and made the changes that way. And yes, you could do. But it might be you have a design where you have lots and lots of different fills. And um, by knocking out the objects that you don't want to show in your film strip, you will then only have what you have left. So in this case, it's just the fills. And then that allows me to be very accurate in terms of um, uh, uh, what I'm choosing. And that's useful to know. In this case, it's quite straightforward because I've only got four fill patterns. Um, but you might find if you're working on a very complicated design, you might have uh, you know, dozens of fill patterns and you might only want to edit just a few aspects of those. So that would allow you just to sift that out. So in this case, um, I'm going to, in actual fact, go up to here because we've got a properties tab up here. And in this case, I am going to go uh, click on the pull down arrow. I'm going to go with a spiral fill. And you'll remember from earlier films that the lower the number in density, the uh, closer your stitches are together. And in this case, I'm going to change that to 12. So I'm going to open that up a little bit and then I'm going to go OK. And let me just zoom in a little bit because there's just something I want to talk about here, although it's not to do with the edit tab. I don't know if you can see we've got these lines coming in here. On, on the fill, which don't look very good. So let me, I'm going to go to the Home tab and I'm going to then choose Edit Points. And if I click on that, I, you can see, but we have a little green diamond with an S, which is the start point, and a red square with an E in it. And that's our end point. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put my pointer over that green start point I'm going to do a left click and then I'm just going to drag that to here to the start of my spiral and you can see that that's neatened it up. So sometimes if you have stitchery that's um, uh, perhaps not what you expected, don't be scared to click on edit points and look at where the end and the start point is because maybe that's what the issue is. So I'm just going to exactly repeat that over here just bring that down okay and then that then means if I go back to my edit tab I'm going to put all my objects back and let's just pull out a little bit so we can see what's going on there we go and it might be you say, well, that's 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 great. That's looking really good. Let me just click on this object down here so I can see those fills. Happy with those looking good. But it might be I say, well, I actually want to get rid of all these satin columns. Now, again, what I could do is I could find a satin column in my film strip. I could delete that out. But again, let me show you uh, an easier way of doing that. So I'm going to go to the hide object types. I'm going to click on the lines. I'm going to knock out all the lines. I'm going to knock out all the fills. I know I haven't got any satin areas. So what I have here is just my satin columns. So at this point, I could go to my home tab. I could do select all visible and then I could hit delete. And then I come back to edit and you think, Karina, where's my design gone? If I then go display all objects because we've hidden they're, they're hiding at the moment and there's my design and you can see how easy it was to actually really make some quite sophisticated editing to that existing embroidery design.
but let me show you some more things. So I've got a lace work butterfly in here that I've loaded into my hoop. Again, it's from the free downloads from mysonet.com. They're the free samples. And let me talk about some of the other features on the edit tab. So you can see from over here on the design panel, we've got four color changes within this design. Now, if we come up to um, these buttons up here, we've got draw previous color block and draw next color block. So if I click on next color block, that is just going to show me what's going on with that first color change. And in this case, it's a cut work design. So we've got a line of stitching to mark where you would need to cut through your fabric and then some lines of stitching to secure something like a, a water soluble fabric in here. If I click the next color block, that's actually showing me what would then happen. So we would then have this metallic green going on and this cross hatching in these four areas would be on a water soluble fabric. So that would give you like a machine lace effect. If I then click next color block, that's giving me this uh, sort of um, sandy mustard uh, pattern fill in here. And of course, if I need to, I can actually always go back a stage. And then the last stage is this satin lines, which is the body and the wings detailing and the antenna. And working like this is a great way to just isolate an area that you want to work on. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to hit display all objects. Because there's a couple of other features over on here that you might find useful. Let's say I wanted to select all the areas of radial fill. What I could do, I could click on one area and here it is on my uh, film strip. And it might be you think, well, um, I can find the other ones, I can um, sort them out, but it might be that you have a much more complicated design like this and you might have, it might not be clear where all your areas of a certain fill is, or indeed it could be a satin column or a line, a satin area. But over here we've got a uh, select similar. And if I click on this button, and choose select similar from the visible from what's showing. If I then scroll up, can you see that has actually automatically selected all those areas of the radial fill that if I wanted to change it, go into the properties in some way, I could do. So that's a really nice, useful uh, tool. If I choose this area of um, fill, this pattern fill over here, what I can actually do at the moment, this fill has a triple stitch outline. And let's say that in actual fact, what I wanted to do, not change what's going on on the actual outer line, but maybe I wanted to change what's going on with this triple stitch on the inside. So what I could actually do is if I click break apart, if you look over here on the film strip, that's actually broken that um, object down into um, even simpler objects. So for instance, I've got the, I can see that I've got, that's gonna be the triple stitch around the outside, but these here are the triple stitches around the hole. So for instance, if I was to click on the top one, hold down my shift key, click on, the um, bottom one and then I do a left click and drag it the other side of the color change. Let me just click off here so you can see. Can you see in actual fact I've put a green outline to those holes and that's a really nice simple way of actually making quite a complex editing change. Again, let me show you another thing that we can do. Again, I need to go and just pick up my edit points. And I want to go back to my edit tab. And for instance, if I look at this satin line, can you see we've got a start point on one end and the end point 
on the other. And for instance, what I could do if I needed to, I don't really need to in this case, but there might come time you might have plotted some satin lines in and then you suddenly realise, oh, my machine's going to be over the wrong side once it's finished. If only I could get it to reverse. If I click reversal and I want to reverse the line, can you see my start point is now here and my end point is there. And that can be quite a useful thing to uh, just be aware of that feature. Now, so far, we haven't been deleting anything. On, on our changes, if you remember from our lady with the long hair down here, I just put that on the clipboard. So just one golden rule, if you are actually going to be selecting objects and deleting them rather than putting them on your clipboard, you might want to make sure that you've actually hidden your stops and colours and if there are any um, appliques um, or indeed groups that you need to hide as well. Particularly your stops and colours can be sat there on your film strip and when you go to home and if you do select all visible you will find that you'll actually accidentally when you hit delete remove your colour stops as well. So just be aware of doing a select all visible and hitting delete. So hopefully you can see how useful these tools are that are on the edit bar in the digitizing module. If you found this a useful film, please give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can help you get started using the MySonet embroidery software. Happy sewing.